Resource guarding is a highly misunderstood and controversial topic for good reason. There's a lot of fear around it. There's a lot of misconceptions. Before I show exactly how I manage and prevent resource guarding in my dogs personally, I want to squash a common myth and that is resource guarding means your dog is trying to be dominant. It means your dog is trying to be aggressive or that they are a bad dog or have really poor genetics. And none of those things are true when it comes to resource guarding the reality is your dog finds value in a resource that resource may be a couch maybe your bed a toy a treat food even you and they are trying to communicate the value of that resource whether that is through barking growling snarling or side eye or getting rigid resource guarding is a very normal and natural behavior in dogs again it's simply a form of communication in my experience i really break it down into seven different activities with an emphasis on proactive training, meaning my goal is really more about preventing resource guarding from being a problem or dangerous in my household. And the first two activities are very similar in that I work on conditioning my dogs to feel excited and happy when I approach them, especially if they're chewing or eating on something that's of high value. Also, make sure you stay tuned until the end because I will be sharing five super common mistakes people make all the time when it comes to resource guarding that you absolutely want to avoid to help condition my dogs to be more comfortable with me approaching them especially when they're eating or have something of value is I will have a higher value treat or higher value toy. And when I approach them as they're eating out of their food bowl or they're chewing on a bone, I will toss the toys or the treats or high value food in their direction. I'm not asking them of anything. I'm not staring them down. I'm not getting close enough to where they're starting to get real tense and growling and barking. None of that. I'm getting as close as I can to where they're not having any reaction, keeping everything super safe. If you practice this over and over again, your dog will start to associate with you approaching as good things coming. A very important step of this is after I toss a few treats their way, I then leave. I walk away to another room or another part of the room. I don't engage, I don't talk, I don't try to approach them further. I just toss a few their way, walk away. Toss a few treats their way, walk away, do it again the next day or do it again a few hours later. Do this so many times that slowly over time they become more comfortable with my presence. And when I first start, I might put a lower value treat or lower value food in their bowl to start and then have something of extreme value that as they're eating out of the bowl, again, not super close to them where they start showing or displaying reactive or resource guarding behaviors like the snarling or the getting sniff or the side eye or the tail tuck. Another activity is hand feed. I, from day one bringing a dog home, whether it's a foster dog or a new puppy, I feed them out of my hand for at least one of their meals every single day. And you can do something as simple as holding the food under the thumb and then when they're eating it and not using their teeth, they're only using their tongue. Or even better, you can use the meal time when you're hand feeding to work on basic cues and commands like sits, downs, the middle cue, the stand cue, the place cue. And these basic obedience cues are gonna be a great way to kind of build that relationship between you two. Most dogs really, really love to work. Also friendly reminder, if you're getting value from this, click that subscribe button to learn how to train and feed your dog better with my daily dog tips. Next is the trade game, where instead of walking up and taking something away from my dog, whether that's a bone or a toy, I trade them. So maybe my dog is chewing on a toy that they're really enjoying and I wanted them to not have that toy anymore or I wanna practice this activity, I will approach with something of higher value and I'll either ask for a drop it and if you want to know how to teach drop it, comment below and I'll make a video on that or I will ask them for the hand touch cue, which that video will be linked down below for you. And then they'll come to me with the touch cue, bring their nose to my hand, and I'll reward them with something of higher value. This way what they're learning is, oh, when mom or dad approaches me, it doesn't mean they're gonna take something away, it means I'm going to get something. Pro tip on this is I jackpot reward in the beginning when I'm first practicing this, meaning that, this is very important, 
when they're chewing on something of value, I want them to come to me. I'll ask them for a hand touch cue. They'll leave that toy. They'll come to me, put their nose to my hand. I mark that immediately with my marker word, which is yes. And then immediately follow with a jackpot reward, which is giving a high quantity of high value treats back to back to back to back, like four to 10 at a time. Remember, this is pro tip too, giving a dog a handful of treats and then just like taking a bunch at a time equals in their mind, because they think in the terms of currency, one yummy treat. Versus if you take that same one big treat, break it up into four or five little ones or smaller ones, and then treat, 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 that's four or five different currencies. So that's a lot more valuable to most dogs. When I bring in a new foster dog, especially one that's had a traumatic past and they tend to have anxiety, nervousness, resource guarding tendencies and behavior, I find that as soon as they settle into my home and I create a calm, safe, relaxed, secure space for them, a lot of these behavior challenges they're having decrease considerably, if not completely go away. And so what I like to practice is just practicing a lot of mental stimulating activities, enrichment activities, brain games. I have a bunch of my favorites linked down below for you to check after this video where we are working our dog's mind. Another thing to consider if your dog is struggling with resource guarding is a vet checkup. Sometimes I've learned this through having a foster dog uh, that I was rehabbing and we had a vet checkup and we learned that they had something wrong with them. They had an infection in their tooth was one example, or they had some kind of pain going on that maybe I couldn't visibly see. So this is something I always recommend if there's any abnormal behavior or unwanted behavior that you're struggling with, I always recommend to consult with a veterinarian. My veterinarians that I prefer are integrative or holistic personally, and I'll have a link below of where you can find those. Now, before I share five common mistakes I see with resource guarding and what we do to sometimes make it worse, let's talk about managing multiple dogs or kids in that household or even other people in the household or a cat. And that is, Generally speaking, it is safest and best for most, in my opinion, situations to feed our dogs or give them the things that they resource or value, which is typically food or bones or high value toys separated from each other. Now let's talk about five really common mistakes. First and foremost is trying to put your hand in their mouth when they're chewing a bone and just reaching it out to show them your boss or putting your hand in their dog food bowl and moving it around to show them that they they can't snarl at you when, when they're eating. That kind of stuff can actually lead to resource guarding more so than not in my personal experience. I used to believe that, so no judgment. Like I used to be the one to like, give them the bowl and then just take it away because I thought that that's what you were supposed to do like eight years ago. I've since learned that that can actually make your dog feel insecure or uncomfortable. And it's kind of a rude behavior. You wouldn't want somebody doing that to you. So I don't want to do that to them. And then another one, which is so common, and I will admit is a natural response for a lot of people. So we need to watch ourselves, And that is punishing our dog if they start exhibiting resource guarding, behaviors or tendencies, which again can be that snarling or the growling or the kind of getting stiff at you and you wanna go, no, Fluffy, don't you do that. Uh, that can be more harmful than not, in my personal opinion. Again, this is what has worked for my dogs. You had to make the best decision for yours and be your dog's best advocate. You're probably not gonna like this next mistake because it might be something that you're not ready to do, but I find it to be important. And that is if there is a certain item or object, a certain kind of chew bone, a, a ball, a certain kind of ball toy or something that your dog particularly values and is causing a lot of issues and challenges in the home, it might be best to not give that anymore. And I know that's hard because you might think, oh, but my, my dog loves playing fetch, but then when I try to take the ball away, he growls at me or she snarls at me or becomes really tense and rigid. And in that situation, I pers personally would probably not give a ball or that specific chew bone if it was causing issues. And another one to avoid is leaving toys and things out at all times because when there's this constant access to it, it becomes more challenging in my opinion and in my experience to manage and work on that behavior. Instead, I like to work on giving the toy to them for a dedicated play session and then work on trading that so that we can work on that behavior. I also think it's a big mistake to not be working with our dogs on 
basic obedience, basic cues, not because they're important to know, but because if we spend 10 minutes a day working on three to five different cues, which would be like two to three minutes each, like even just basic sits, downs, stays, hand touch cue. If we don't do that, we're not building this trust and this bond between our dog and doing that is so important for their mental health. So let's click the video right here and I'll jump over with you to talk about my daily pup drills, which again, take 10 minutes or less, which in my experience, doing this once a day for a few months can see a complete transformation in our dog's behavior. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.